Hi, this is Mr. Dirksen, and we're going to do a uh, preview of some points from Chapter 2. So this will be Video 1. This is Net 200, and this is Spring Term 2015. What we're talking about here are switched networks, and it's from the generic routing and switching Cisco curriculum. <clears throat> Cisco switches, they work right out of the box. Which means that the switch, you can take it, plug it in, and it works. Because the switch uses MAC addressing, learns the addresses, forwards the uh, frames through to the correct destination. What we're going to cover in this chapter, what gets covered in this chapter, is this um, basic configuration. So we're looking at iOS, <coughs> the basics, give the switch a name and so forth, and then we'll talk about security. And how to secure that. Also in there, then, is built right into all of this, is the idea of remote access. What this means, you have to be careful, this means remote access from administration. You know, somebody's going to access it um, from an administration point of view. Management, how to implement, talk about security. Security will actually be covered in another video. So what we want, what we want is we want the users to be able to access the network. And usually the first point of access would either be a switch or an access point. A wired solution or a wireless solution. And we want a secure and available environment. Next slide. I'm going to highlight the objectives from the chapter. <clears throat> so, initial configuration, by the way, this was a typo. That's for a different uh, chat, uh, actually, a different course. Configure initial, configure as a switch. For example, name, number of things there. Um, switch ports to meet network requirements. We have duplex, um, half duplex, full duplex. We have different speeds that we'll configure there. <coughs> switch versal interface. This is for management. That is to manage the switch. You know, how how the administrator can manage the switch. This is not for the users. The users see none of that. A switch does not have to have an IP address to work. Okay. We'll cover the basic security attacks. A lot of that's been um, taken care of with a number of different ways you can manage the switch. <clears throat> Describe the best practices, you know, the idea of what works, what works, and then we'll talk about port security. Who can connect? We can, we can manage this, okay? We can manage this. Um, one way is there is a way to manage that working with MAC addresses. <clears throat> Power on self-test just like any um, computing device <clears throat> then run the bootloader <clears throat> from ROM 
does low level CPU initialization registers in the CPU make sure those things are cleared ready to go high speed staging areas in a CPU <clears throat> bootloader initializes flash file system <clears throat> bootloader locates and loads default iOS operating system <clears throat> image in the memory then controls has the control over the iOS just a reminder inside the computer we have memory we have memory also inside the switch we have NVRAM NVRAM, <clears throat> we have flash, get that all caps, and we have ROM. NVRAM holds the configuration, which eventually load in memory. Flash holds the iOS, and that's loaded in the memory. Of course, the ROM has the uh, boot in order to do the post test, and so that. There for that is loaded in there first. <clears throat> All right. Boot sequence. <clears throat> I'm not going to read all this to you. Um, <clears throat> automatically boot. Boot environment variable. If it is not set, then it'll search. It'll search for a way to <clears throat> place to load the iOS. The iOS operating system then initializes the interfaces using the iOS commands found in the configuration file, which is stored in NVRAM. Okay. If the iOS cannot be loaded, here are the steps in which you can <clears throat> boot the switch in order to uh, recover from a problem with loading the iOS. Okay? We'll practice that in class. I believe we're going to stop.